Psalms 119, verse 17. And we're going to do every verse. Now, the last time we were through Psalms 119, we did eight, we did eight verses. And I think we can do 16, and if we have to, we'll do eight and do the other eight another night. I'm in no rush. Then you showed thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be seen, rightly dividing the word of truth. And must not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So, Gamil. And I may not be pronouncing these correctly, but the best of my knowledge, verse 17, Gamil. And this is the Jewish alphabet. Deal bountifully, liberal, large, with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Why do I want to live? So I can keep the word of God. I'm a servant. That's a big nasty word today. Ooh, servant, bad word. It's someone who loves the Lord and will answer to the Lord. I don't mean answer as in judgment. I want you to do it. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. Call me, Lord, I'm here. What would you have me to do, Lord? Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That's the book of Moses. So we're not looking for doctrine here for the church. When we're looking at the law, because if we were to come into Psalms 119 and say, this is church age for the Christian then Galatians would give us a big flop. Because the church in Galatia tried to go back to the law. The writer to the Hebrews would say, you know, the law is... Now we can spiritually apply what we're reading in Psalms 119. But doctrinally, historically, goes for the Jew that's under the law. And why would he want his eyes open to the law? Because the law gave him salvation. The law told him what he was to do for his sins. The law was to tell him what he was to do. Now, I'm not saved by the law. I'm saved by grace. After salvation, the law would show me how to be a good Christian. But the law shows me I'm guilty and the law can't save me. The law will prevent me, after I'm saved by Jesus Christ, to get wood, hay, or stubble. I'm a stranger in the earth. Is that not true? Put me in the airplane, close my eyes, and parachute me somewhere and anywhere in the world. And when I land, after having a heart attack of being parachuted, when I land, no one's going to know me. And no one's going to know you. The odds of dropping you somewhere in the world and then gathering a group of people, you probably would not know who they are and they would probably not know who you are. Hide not thy commandments from me. And he's saying, Lord, there's so many people in the world. You know them all. What am I? What am I in a place called Daytona Beach, Florida? That the Lord answers my prayers and hears me and enlightens me when I study the Word of God. What, what am I? Why am I? That God has looked upon me and, you know, to bless me and Help me and guide me to help others. Commandments. Christians have commandments. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's the number one commandment of a Christian that is failed. Pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. And everything give thanks. Weep with those that weep. Those are commandments. Be a cheerful giver. My soul. The eternal breaketh for the longing that it has unto thy judgments. Again, that's the law at all times. 
You know, if you didn't do this, judgment will come. If you didn't do that, judgment is going to happen. Yet, is not for the Christian judgment? Is not wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ judgment? Is not gold, silver, and precious stuff? Is that not, is that not, hey, you did well. Hey, what'd you do that for? You know? And they say everything that is done for Christ will, will, will survive. Well, that gold, silver, precious stone, I believe also, and I can't prove this with the scriptures, but you know, the food that you ate to keep yourself healthy and well for the Lord, I believe that that is a, a reward. And the food that did your body harm, I believe that's a loss. As much as somebody would say for a Christian, well, if you smoke cigarette, you're going to shorten your life. Yeah, that's a loss. And yet, if you were to do something healthy to, and not to go crazy, but you do something to be healthy, you're like, you know, walking or jogging, that would be a reward that if you don't make it your God, but you make it, you know, Lord, if I can just be healthier, you can use me longer. Then the judgment of doing good be what? Good. The judgment of doing bad would be what? Evil. Thou, God, has rebuked the proud that are cursed. There is no blessing in pride. It's a sin. Absolutely a sin. Proud, pride, and boasting. And yet the Bible says, boast of the Lord. God never, never, says I'm proud of you he said this is my well beloved son in whom I'm well pleased for the Christian God will never say I'm proud of you Christian no he says well done never is there a good and righteous holy way to use the word pride it'd be like saying you know what I'm going to take a bucket of mud I'm going to clean my car it don't work does not work. The, cur the proud are cursed, which do err from thy commandment. So what is the number one thing that would cause people to sin against God? Pride. What would prevent somebody from believing on the Lord Jesus Christ? What will my friends think? What would keep a Christian from not witnessing? Well, my family won't love me. I won't be able to go here. They, they won't bite me there. They won't appreciate it. They'll get offended. And that's the great sin of the world today, being offended. And what's the Bible say? You have erred. You have erred. Remove from me the reproach and contempt, which is despised, worthlessness, vile. For I have kept thy testimony. Lord, whatever is terrible and sin and not right in my life, remove it. Help me to remove it and get rid of it. I thank the Lord God that I got saved years after that. I got rid of the alcohol. Many years after that, I got rid of the tobacco. God help me. I did not do that on my own power. One day, God said, with the, with the alcohol, just dump it down the sink. Okay. I have not had a taste for it since. And God said, you know what? I, every time you smell that, I want you to smell urine. And when I smell that stuff, it smells like pee. Thank you, Lord. Now, cigarettes, it took me a little bit longer, and there's, there's a story a real story about that, but I don't have time to get into this one moment when I finally gave it to God and said, God, I really want to get rid of this. Really? You've been messing around with me. I know, Lord, I'm sorry. And boom, it's gone. 
Now, there are other sins in my life. There's other sins in our life that God leaves to show, you know what? That's a flea to show that you're still a dog. Because if I were to take away all your sins, you would not come to me. You would be pride and be cursed. Because look how well I am. There are people who have sins and look at me. Look how great I am. And look down upon others. Princes also deceit and speak against me. That's people in authority of the government. And there are so many people today involved in the government and their politics, whether Democrat or whatever they are. And if they were to meet their political hero, whoever he or she may be, if they were a Christian and they would stand up to what the Word of God and what Jesus says to do, they would be properly, according to the Bible, put down and cast off and scorned. For the Bible says, know that it hated me first, and marvel not, my brethren, the world hates you. Isn't it amazing when you go, they'll tell you you cannot talk two things, religion and politics. And yet Christians are fooled today, I can put my religion in politics. No, you can't. You can't do it at the barbershop. But thy servant, again, that servant did meditate. I put effort into, I searched, I prayed, I saw, I fasted. I, going out to you, God, in thy statutes. That is an Old Testament form to say, I've studied to show thyself approved. God, I've looked at your law. God, I've looked at your statutes. I've looked at the commandments. I've seen what you said. I've seen what you want me to do. And for the New Testament Christian, we're to meditate on the Word of God. We're to study the Word of God. We're to look at the Word of God. We're to rightly divide the Word of God. I had a guy recently. Every week he come up with something stupid that was not Bible at all and he got angry with me. For what? Because I told you what the Bible says? And your answer, well, that's what man told me. And I told him, men are wrong. And I gave him that famous expression, when in doubt, check it out. You know what people don't do? I can tell by the pulpits in the world. I know what they don't do. They don't check their pastor out. They don't check the scripture. And it's amazing that I've seen people have a have another Bible, sit in church with another Bible, and they have not raised a hand a question, why does yours say different from mine? And you ask my family, if I get any lesson that is different from what my Bible, you know I will be in your face. And if you're going to try to teach me wrong and teach people around me wrong, you better believe I'm going to be in your face. You got to study. Thy testimony, what God has done for the nation of Israel, from calling an old man and old woman to have a baby that they should never have had of. From, from, from Jacob seeing the angels going up and down. All the plagues upon Pharaoh, the Red Sea, the Jordan Sea, get them, them in that land. A man fight with an ox gold, a man having strength because of his hair. Elijah and, and Elisha and all the miracles. One day Enoch was not. Everything that God has done in that the, the, the testimonies. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. That's what that is. For the Christian, God's testimony, when you write down, and I have some, some, not all. In my Bible, in my prayer book, God, I pray for this. You answered me. God took care of this. God recently, uh, get, I had to renew my driver's license. I saved up money. I had a lot more money when I when I needed. I have a surgery coming up in the month that the Lord tarries, and the money that I saved up and I did not need, 
for my driver's license, I was able to, hey, that goes to the surgery. Praise God. God's wonderful. That's his, te you know, most churches will be a testimony time. And you're supposed to speak about, the, I've been in churches and the pastor, goodwill, people raising, I got a testimony of the Lord and some people get up there and, you know, uh, it's all about them. Or it's how the government put a check in their mailbox and they could get their, that's not what it's about. It's about God's testimony. My testimonies also are my delight and my counselor. What's the counselor of a testimony? What is the counselors of count your many blessings? You come in your life, you got a problem. You look back and say, hey, you know what? Yeah, this problem is a problem. But I had a problem like this problem before. And it's not like this one, but God got me out of this problem. And I'm here today by God's testimony. I don't know what he's going to do, but he's going to do something because he's done something before. So I'm going to trust God because I trusted him before. And that builds faith. And that builds reliance on God. And I know that personally. Dollar. Dollar. Now some, some of you may have Psalms and you say, what are you talking about? Some Bibles have the Jewish lettering. Some don't. I think they should have it. I mean, if you know A, B, C, D, E, F, G, well, here's Allah, here's House, here's Gamil, Dollar. My soul, cleave it. That means stick to. That means adhere to. That means to hold. I know the cleaver means you take a cleaver and you cut the meat. That's the opposite. To cleave is together. A husband and wife should cleave together. A divorce would be a, cle a cleaver. You don't want a cleaver. You want a husband and wife to cleave together, a family. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Well, that's where my body's made of. That's what my flesh is. Out of the dirt. Quicken me. Make alive. That's what quicken means. Alive. Well. I'm dead in this body of flesh. Quicken me. Quicken thou, God. Quicken thou, God, me. God, you quicken me. God, you give me life. According to thy word. So if you go back in the law. And you go back in the prophets. At to what point. That the psalmist writes this song. In the word of God. There is words of life. By the word. Jesus said I am the way. The truth and the life. Quicken me. Resurrect me. Make me alive. I have declared thy way, my way. I'm going up to God and say, God, this is what I'm doing, good or bad. This is what I'm doing. This is what I did today. 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 And the Lord, for thou hurtest me. Teach me thy statutes. All right, Lord, this is what I did. This is what I did. This is what I did. And you heard me, Lord. Now, what does your statute say about this, 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 this? And if I'm to tarry one more day, Lord, if I, you want me to do that? Okay, I do that. You want me to do that? I do that. If I'm not supposed to do that, then don't have me do that. If I'm supposed to do that, I do that. If I'm not supposed to do that, Lord God, show me your step, then I won't do it. It's my walk. Make me to understand. That's what many people don't know. They have knowledge. They got a piece of paper. But they don't understand. Oh, we can send rockets in our space. And we can name one of them the dragon. But we can't understand. Revelation says that dragon is the old serpent, the devil, and Satan. We can go out of space. Yeah, we can go to Mars. We can have Hubble. 
and yet we can't see God. You got the knowledge, you got the wisdom, but you have no understanding of God. We understand God. A Christian is to know, to have wise about, and understand God and his word. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous work. Show me God what you're doing. Show me God in your word. Show me God the right way. Show me God. I mean, show me God. Then God, I, I'll, I'll talk about you rightly. God, it will be all to your glory. God, I will praise you. My soul melted for heaviness. Oh, troubles and problems of life. Oh, Lord God, strengthen thou, God, me, according to thy word. Oh, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Oh, what a miserable day. Get your eyes in the word. Well, I, I, I'll go show you my shrink. My shrink. No, get your eyes in the word. I'll take a blue pill. No, get your eyes in the word. It's amazing how God works through his word. If you have a steady reading program or path that I can read from Genesis to Revelation at least once a year. At least once. You can do it too, wonderfully. You can do it three, great. I can read through the Bible once a year. I'll do a daily proverb, wonderful. I'll do a daily psalm with my Bible reading through the year. Excellent. And when you read through your Bible and you stick to witness of reading your Bible and you'll see that one day I don't feel good. Oh, God. And you open up, oh, this is going to read. Oh. Wow, I needed that today. Oh, that's what Pastor was talking about Sunday. Oh, okay, I understand now. Because his words are alive. Quicken me according to thy word. It's amazing what the word can do. Remove from me the way of lying. If you need a verse to get out of politics, there it is. Find me one politician that did 100% of his oaths to get into office. Now, if he done 99 of his oaths and did not do that one oath, he that's guilty in one point is guilty in all, James says. Yeah, I know a God that said all the prophecies, they say 48 prophecies of the first coming of Jesus Christ were all fulfilled. God's not a liar. How do you know the rapture's going to happen? All 48 prophecies of the first advent happened. How do you know Jesus Christ is coming the second time? Because all the prophecies of the first advent happened 100%. And grant me thy law, there it is again, graciously. <laughs> you wouldn't think gracious would go with the law. But it would be gracious for God to give you the law to say, you're guilty. And when God shows you you're guilty through the law, then you can confess your sins and he'll be faithful enough to forgive and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Listen, the law is good that when God can use it to say, hey, look what you're doing wrong. Oh, Lord, God, forgive me. Oh, God, I didn't realize it. And you get that through the word. I have chosen the way of truth. There you go. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. There it is. Find Jesus in the Old Testament. There he is. Psalms 119, verse 30, amongst many places. By judgment, Jesus is going to be judged. Have I laid before me? What's he done? He's looked at the law. He's looked at the reading. He's looked at the word. He's looked at what God said. He said, if I do this good, there's a good judgment. If I do this which is abomination, if I do this which is iniquity, if I do this which is sin, 
there is judgment of evil. There's good judgment and there's bad judgment. A good judgment is to go through a green light. A bad judgment is to go through a red light. And again, he's saying, I've laid before me the word of God that he has as a psalmist. He has looked at the word. He studied the word of God. He's longed the word of God. He wants the word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Oh, if Christians had that love. I have stuck unto thy testimony. Right, there was a jingle when I was growing up. I am stuck on oh, the band-aid. I am stuck on you. You're going to be like that band-aid on that kid's knee. If you remember the commercial. You remember he had the ouch. And that band-aid stuck to the knee of that boy that was injured. We are to stick as a band-aid to the skin. We're not to peel off. We're not to rub on off. What God has done for us, what God has done for others around us, we are to stick to it. Because there's more testimony to come. Oh Lord, put me not to shame. Shall I say it again? Start to show thyself a fruit unto God, a workman that needs to, not to be shamed. Rightly, listen, you know how you get put to shame? It's when you walk outside the Lord, when you're going against the Lord, when you've sinned against the Lord, you had rebelled against the Lord, and the Lord comes along and he loves you and he chastises you. And when you get chastised, you're put to shame because you have done wrong. Hebrews 12 or 13. I forget which chapter. <coughs> I will run in the way of the commandments. I'll run. I'm not going to dilly-dally. I'm not going to sit on the couch. I'm going to run after what you told me to do. Again, the, the commandments for the Christian, going on the world of gospel. Run with those feet. Pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. Run! When thou, God, shalt enlarge my heart. Now, that's not the physical heart that goes boom, 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 boom. When I started almost six years ago, when I started the, the ministry here in Daytona Beach, the farmer's market, and, you know, I pray for it. But coming on six years, almost six years, Lord willing, my heart aches for those people. And within six years, you know, the people who come to the point is the ones who've been there the, the full time, they have come just to ignore me. And it's not me that Jesus says. They're ignoring the gospel. And that hurts my heart. Because if they're not saved, I know where they're going and they need to pay attention. And when I see children, that excites my heart to, you know, whatever you're saying, shut up and, and mention in front of that child to believe on Jesus. And pray that that child would be able to get a gospel track. And then get back to what I was talking about. Put my heart, reach my heart out to the children that come to the farmer's market. So they can hear about the saving grace of Jesus. And then that soul that just doesn't care. They just don't want me to go bye-bye. They're looking at their watch and he's usually gone home by now. And my heart says, oh. And my heart says, oh, more than it said, oh, last year. And twice as much as the year before. And much more for when I started a farmer's market ministry. When I first started a farmer's market, I was out there yelling and screaming, I was preaching. And my preaching today is preaching, and yet it's a, it's a pleading. It's a will you not come. Lord, enlarge my heart. My heart is, is somebody not doing very well in health. And that's the, if you can hear that, that's the devil in this music attacking. Devil uses it in my life all the time, the music. But when you hear bad things and tragedy, 
to your Christian brethren and your heart. It, when I found out about the Christian family, and the, man, my ride home yesterday was just miserable. I'm just, Lord God, I, I'm praying for the both of them and their family. And Lord, my heart was burning. My heart is still burning. I understand with weep with those that weep. Because God has enlarged my heart. I love the brethren. And there's some of the church brethren I can't stand. Oh, I can't stand them. But I pray for them. I pray for their medical needs. I pray for their family needs. I pray that they'll grow in the Lord. But they aggravate me. That's a heart that's been enlarged by God, by the love of God. The love of God, for God is love. And the God of love that you want to love and you want to be like Christ. You want to get the mind of Christ. You want to grow in Christ. With that, the mind of Christ also comes with a larging heart. To please the Lord. 